They Called Us Enemy in the Presidio Middle School Community by Miss Friel, Teacher Librarian, Spring 2022, read for you by Miss Friel and parent volunteer Christine Miauchi. Project Overview. This year, we gave all of our students and staff a copy of George Takei's book, They Called Us Enemy, about his experience as a child living in American incarceration camps during World War II. Over 120,000 Japanese Americans were forced to live in these camps. Many of those families were from San Francisco, and some of their children and grandchildren are students or work at Presidio Middle School. In this presentation, you will learn a little about what happened and its impact on some of our community members' families. History of Racism Against Asian Immigrants and Asian Americans The United States has a long history of racist treatment of Asian immigrants and their descendants. Many laws were passed that either restricted or denied Asian immigration starting in the late 1800s. There were also laws that banned Asian immigrants from becoming citizens or owning property. Asian immigrants and Asian Americans have often faced discrimination and prejudice. A store in Oakland, California, owned by a Japanese American family. Pearl Harbor and the Evacuation of Japanese Americans. A U.S. battleship sinks during the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. During World War II, Japan bombed the U.S. naval base at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, on December 7, 1941. The next day, the United States declared war on Japan. The U.S. government then ordered that all Japanese Americans living on the west coast of the United States had to be evacuated or forcibly removed from California, Oregon, Washington, and a part of Arizona. The government said that Japanese Americans might be spies for Japan. There was never any evidence of this. Japanese Americans forced to leave their homes. 120,000 Japanese Americans were forced to live in American incarceration camps from 1942 to 1945. Two-thirds were American citizens. 17,000 were children under the age of 10. Students were pulled out of schools and colleges and sent to the camps. Families had to sell most of their belongings, their homes and businesses, for very little money. Children at School in San Francisco, 1942 George Takei, actor, author, political, and LGBTQ activist. George Takei wrote They Called Us Enemy about his childhood when he had to live in American incarceration camps. George Takei is most famous for his role as Hikaru Sulu in the original Star Trek television series. George Takei and his husband, Brad Altman. George Takei. As a child during World War II, George had to live at the Santa Anita Racetrack, Rower, and Tule Lake incarceration camps. George Takei made a video for our school. Hello, I'm George Takei, and it's my pleasure to be talking to young people all over America about my book, They Called Us Enemy, about my childhood, because it is an important story for all Americans, but especially for those of you students at the Presidio Middle School, because the Presidio was the headquarters of the Western Defense Command uh, under General John DeWitt. And it was from there that all of the orders, the orders to uh, round us up, the orders to uh, house us temporarily while the camp, uh, camps were being built, the orders of, of where the camps are going to be built, all that came from the Presidio the Western Defense Command. So my story is important for all America, but particularly for those of you uh, at uh, the Presidio Middle School. It's your history as well. 
So study hard. There are important lessons to be learned for American democracy. And I hope you learn the lesson well because you are going to be the voters of tomorrow. Some of you are going to be the movers and shakers of tomorrow. You are going to be important people making important decisions. And I hope it's all going to be based on the knowledge that you get from your school at the Presidio Middle School. Good luck and study hard. I'm George Takei. The Western Defense Command and General John L. DeWitt, the Presidio San Francisco. Western Defense Command Headquarters in the Presidio of San Francisco, 1942. The same building in the Presidio, 2022. General John L. DeWitt. He was in charge of the Western Defense Command. The Evacuation Orders All of the orders came from the Presidio in San Francisco. The signs were posted on April 1, 1942. Families had to report on April 7. The Evacuation Orders The signs also told people what they had to bring with them. They could only bring with them what they could carry. They were not allowed to bring their pets. The evacuation orders. These signs were posted around San Francisco, telling Japanese Americans where they had to report to. San Francisco's Japantown, then and now. Japantown in 1942. The same block in Japantown, 2022. Leaving Japantown, 1942. Japanese American families get on the bus under armed guard in Japantown. The bus took them to the Tanforan racetrack where they would have to live until they were transferred to more permanent incarceration camps. Tanforan then and now. Tanforan racetrack 1920s to 1940s. Tanforan shopping mall 2022. Temporary Assembly Center Camp at Tanforan Racetrack, 1942. Japanese Americans arriving at Tanforan. Temporary Assembly Center Camp at Tanforan Racetrack, 1942. Japanese American families had to live in horse stalls. Many families said that they smelled like horse manure. My name is Christine Miyauchi, and I'm a parent volunteer. The camps where families in this presentation lived. Tuli Lake, Takei, Tsukida, Fujimoto, Topaz, Tsukamoto, Postin, Murase, Hila River, Tsukida, Rower, Takei, Fujimoto. An incarceration camp is a camp where people are detained or confined, usually under harsh conditions and without any legal rights. These camps are also often referred to as internment camps. William Tsukida, Presidio Middle School Beacon Director Chris Tsukida's father. Chris with his dad and brother, 2021. A painting from Tule Lake. William Tsukida, William Tsukida was born at the Gila River Incarceration Camp in Arizona. His family was moved to Tule Lake, an incarceration camp in the northeastern part of California where the Nono people were sent. William's father was a Kibei, a Japanese American who was born in the United States and went to Japan in order to receive his education before coming back to America. Hi, my name is William Tsukida. I was born in Gila Camp, Arizona. Uh, the reason we were at Gila Camp was, even though my dad was working in San Francisco, he decided to move to Cortland, California, where he was born, because he figured Cortland was not gonna be a security area like San Francisco. But all the people in the Sacramento area got shipped to uh, Gila Camp, Arizona. And so therefore, 
I ended up at Hila, I ended up being born in Gila camp. Um, during during the uh, time in Gila, we only spent about two years or a year and a half in Gila camp, and then we moved to Tule Lake, California. The reason we moved to Tule Lake, California, was because my father was a Kibe who felt he could not say yes, yes to the loyalty oath questions. There were two questions on the loyalty oath. One said that he would swear unqualified allegiance to the United States. And then the other one said that uh, he, he would forswear any allegiance to any other foreign country. The problem there being that my dad being a Kibe, even though he was born in the United States, his mother and father, my grandparents, were both Japanese nationals. And if the United States government decided to send the Japanese nationals back to Japan, these people, if they said yes, yes to those questions, would then become stateless people. And my dad, fearing that would happen, decided to write no, no. And therefore, there was a group of what we call no-no people in the camps. Uh, from from two, then we went to Tule Lake Camp, where my younger brother was born. And this is when the camp situation really uh, became a real camp situation. Tule Lake became the security camp. And all the Japanese were transferred out of Tule Lake and sent to other camps. And Tule Lake became the security camp with the typical uh, machine gun nests and the tanks and everything else. And so my dad joined a group of men who marched around the camp and said, no, 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 no to to the two questions. Those, those individuals were then sent to New, Santa Fe, New Mexico. And from Santa Fe, New Mexico, they, they opted to go back to Japan and they went back via the Aleutians. Um, the camp situation for me had more an effect because what it did was it split our families my dad going back to Japan during the war, and then my mom and younger brother at the end of the war decided to go back to Japan for, to, to, for my dad. And therefore, my grandmother, knowing what kind of country that my daughter would, her daughter would be going back to, said she was crazy and she should stay in the United States. And therefore it was, it was decided that I would stay with grandma and my younger brother being a baby went back with my mother. Uh, and the way it affected our families were, was that I was not raised by my parents, but instead raised by my grandmother. And I never get, got to grow up with my younger brothers and sister who were all born in, well, the other two were born in Japan, and my younger brother was born in the United States at Tule Lake. Uh, I did not get to see them again until the first time I went to Japan, which was approximately 28 years after uh, the war had ended. Uh, therefore, my camp situation was a lot different in that I wasn't raised by my parents and my parents uh, really had nothing to do with my upbringing. So I really didn't know how it was to be raised by my mother and father. William Tsukida. Tule Lake became a maximum security prison camp to house the Nono people and their families. Stockade at Tule Lake. The stockade was called a prison within a prison. 
Kenji Fujimoto, Presidio Middle School teacher Ms. Valdi's boyfriend, Steve Fujimoto's father. Ms. Valdi with her boyfriend, Steve Fujimoto. Steve's father, Kenji Fujimoto, was born in 1944 in Rower Incarceration Camp in Arkansas. His family was moved to Tule Lake after refusing to pledge loyalty to a country that took away their rights as American citizens. Many families do not have photos from inside of the camps. We are so fortunate that Kenji's family does. Steve with his father, Kenji. Kenji Fujimoto. Kenji is held by his aunt inside Rower. He is surrounded by his grandparents, aunt, and cousin. Kenji with his dad, mom, and little sister at Tule Lake. Kenji Fujimoto. Before the U.S. entered World War II, Nenohachi Tsurumoto, Kenji's grandfather, is shown fishing on vacation at Lake Tahoe in 1939. The funeral of Mrs. Kuma Tsurumoto, Kenji's grandmother. The funeral took place in 1945 at Rower. Kenji's family, after being relocated to Tule Lake, was not allowed to attend the funeral service. Kenji Fujimoto. Kenji and his family had their U.S. citizenship revoked because they were considered no-no people and they were sent to Japan, a country they had never been to before, to live after World War II ended. The Fujimoto family did eventually end up moving back to the U.S. Kenji, second from right, and his family in Japan before moving back to the U.S. Kenji Murase, Presidio Middle School students, Sakura and Kana Murase's grandfather. Kenji Murase was attending UC Berkeley in 1942. He was forced to leave Cal to go to the Poston Incarceration Camp in Arizona with his family. Kenji Murase, Barracks where Japanese Americans lived at Poston. Families fill straw ticks for mattresses after they arrived at Poston. Kenji Murase, excerpt from a letter that Kenji wrote about the living conditions while he was in the camp. Tomain poisoning means food poisoning. They all complain, of course, about the lack of privacy and sanitation facilities. In the Fresno camp, there were reports suppressed in the news that a whole barrack of about 250 was stricken with tomain poisoning, and while no one died, the situation was extremely alarming. This is a replica of a bathroom at Manzanar Incarceration Camp. Bathrooms and showers in the camps lacked privacy. Kenji Murase With assistance from the National Japanese American Student Relocation Council, Kenji was able to leave camp earlier than his family and continue his education at Temple University in Philadelphia. Out of 120,000 people who were forced to live in the camps, 4,000 were able to leave to go to college. Kenji Murase. In 1980, Kenji and his peers established the Nisei Student Relocation Commemorative Fund. The NSRCF awards scholarships to Southeast Asian students. They wanted to help others the way that they were helped many decades earlier to leave the camps and go to universities. Nisei are the first generation of Japanese people born in the U.S. Will Tsukamoto, Presidio Middle School students Ian and Emiko Tsukamoto Chu's grandfather. Ian and Emiko with their grandfather Will, whom they call Ji Chang. When he was a child, Will and his family were forced to live at Tanferan before being moved to Topaz. I would say that I was in uh, two different camps. One was Tanferan. That was before we were sent to uh, the main concentration camp in Topaz. Tanfran was a racetrack, so 
I remember going up in the stands and watching uh, people race around the track. And as it turned out, one of the guys that raced, ra raced around the track and did very well, I met in New York later on, and he took me to Yankee Stadium to watch the Yankees play. What was your strongest memory from the camps? Probably my strongest memory. No, I, I have several. But the strongest memory is at the close of the day, there was an assembly, and Jack Sue, who's known for being in flaw drum song and appeared in the TV and radio shows, a better, his real name was Goro Suzuki, saying, God bless America. I mean, right now, where I am now, I can't imagine being in a concentration camp and singing, God bless America. That would be my strongest memory. Will Tsukamoto, this cane was made in the Gila River incarceration camp in Arizona and given to Ian and Emiko's great-great-grandfather. Ian and Emiko have a lot of extended family members, including grandparents, great-grandparents, and great-great-grandparents who were forced to live at the Topaz incarceration camp. Will Tsukamoto, Topaz incarceration camp. Check out these fiction and nonfiction books from our school library. Visit these museums in person, in the Presidio, or online. The Presidio Officers Club, Exclusion, the Presidio's Role in World War II, Japanese American Incarceration, Military Intelligence Service, MIS, Historic Learning Center. These are just a few of the stories from this time period. Ask your friends and family members to tell you their stories. Thank you so much to all of the families who were willing to share their stories and photographs with us. Thank you also to parent volunteer Christine Miyauchi for your help with this project.